Well, as long as I've lived in in this, well, all my life, you might say, I've I've known about the Bat Cave. It was one of the favorite places we visited when I was a young child. We just loved to come out there and watch the bats uh, fly. I, I was fascinated when I was a Zachary's age there, and I'm just as fascinated today when I see him come out as I was then. Well, we're right in the middle of hill country in uh, south central Texas. We're uh, at a cave known as uh, the Eckert James River Cave, and this is a cave that houses one of the largest uh, colonies of Brazilian freetail bats in the world. The, we know the bat cave's been here and the bats have, have lived here since 1907 when uh, the Eckert family purchased the land. But we think it, uh, it could have been here for thousands, perhaps tens of thousands of years, uh, reading the nightly skies of all these wretched insects that love to bite you. It's one of the um, sort of half a dozen caves in this area where the populations appear to be really stable. I mean, the popula there's a lot of bats in this cave and there have been um, no one is looking and saying, well, there don't seem to be as many as there used to be. We're here right now to try to learn how many bats really are here. When I said 7 million before, or 20 or 40 million, uh, this is just a guess. I mean, it's a best estimate of what we've had from visual counts. And what, what we're here doing right now is using a technology that is uh, based on infrared thermography, uh, trying to, as you know, all animals ha produce heat and uh, this camera that we're using to census these animals is able to detect the heat from the animals and we're then using that to try to count the animals. Well, if, uh, I, I think, the, I think the, main, the main advantage of getting an accurate count would be that so we have a baseline to monitor the populations in the future. Are the populations, we, we, we know that a large number of these caves, several of these caves that had large numbers of bats don't have any now or have very few. This particular cave seems to have quite a few in it still. And, uh, and so we can get a baseline. If we know the numbers, then we can follow the numbers through time and have a feel for what's really happening, rather than guessing at it. It's almost one-fourth of all the mammals known in the world. In fact, if you take all the, rod all the mammals in the world, about one-half of them are rodents, rats and mice and their squirrels and their relatives. Um, about one-fourth of them are bat, of all the mammals are bats, and then all of the other mammals combined, uh, from whales and uh, uh, cats and dogs and giraffes and elephants and rhinos, make up the other one-fourth of mammals. So you can see that bats play an important role in, in the mammalian fauna of the world. It's, it's more than an impact on local environment. These bats are going up really high. Um, these bats are going up, uh, radar studies showed them going up as high as two miles high. Most of the bats are going up to a couple hundred to a couple thousand meters. And they're um, eating insects up at those altitudes. And these insects come from all over. Um, and what we're working on now um, is what are the bats doing up there? And what the bats are doing up there is intercepting migratory insect pests, insect, huge insect population. Now this is a huge bat population. And this huge bat population is being supported by an even huger insect population. And a large number of those insects are um, migratory, migratory insects, insect crop pests that are coming up from Mexico and points farther south at very high altitudes. Wow. The other uh, major reason we're here is to uh, assess the, the influence or the impact of these bats uh, on this surrounding landscape. Now, these bats eat uh, over half their weight in insects each night. And with, if you, all you have to do is take a simple a arithmetic problem and start multiplying the weight of an animal, which is probably a one-eighth of an ounce uh, that uh, what the animal eats. And if they then eat half their weight, uh, we can take a sixteenth of an ounce, let's say, and then multiply that by seven million. And you can pretty well come up how many hundreds of pounds or tons of insects these bats eat each night. So from that perspective, it's important to know what kind of services these bats provide for what we call ecosystems or, or natural habitats. They, just as uh, plants provide oxygen for us to breathe, these bats feed on insects that also provide a service for us as humans. They keep the insect population down. They eat insects that feed on the food that we eat. So they can be very important. Well, let me put it in, in human terms for you. Is, um, 
you know, a typical average person weighing 150 pounds is, is going to have to consume about, you know, about 250 Big Macs a night in order to uh, consume the amount of calories that the bats consume. They consume close to their own body weight in insects nightly. And now that adds up to about 40 tons of insects, mostly agricultural pests, that are uh, consumed each night. And, and uh, in, in addition to that, every night, you know, 20 tons of that ends up uh, falling in the cave after it runs through the bat. <laughs> we call it bat guano, which means bat poop. Yes. We used to go in there and sack up guano, you know, and, and use it for fertilizer. It's a very rich, high nitrogen, and nitrogen content uh, manure. The closest thing I can say is it feels like Neil Armstrong. It feels like I'm walking on the moon. The, the guano, the whole floor that's covered with guano is actually just a light powdery, almost like looks like walking on the moon. And, and um, it's neat, the whole ceiling then is alive with bats. So as the soil is moving and kind of fluffy, um, the whole walls and ceilings all around you are moving and talking to you. And, and the whole thing is just alive. It's, uh, it's not like being in just a cave. <laughs> it's like being in some kind of uh, alien vessel or something. Well, the cave is uh, like an incubator. Uh, the cave is very warm. Uh, it's probably uh, 90 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is like a good hot day in Texas outdoors, but it's it trapped. The heat is produced actually by the animals, the heat that an animal produced. If, just like if you were trapped into an ele in an elevator, all the heat that humans produce would soon warm that elevator. Well, all these uh, millions of bats sitting inside this cave generate heat, and it, because it's a dome-like shaped structure, the heat gets trapped in there. Now, this is ideal for the bats because Warm temperatures uh, help promote rapid growth. It helps promote digestion. And uh, so we think of it as, a, it's a, called a maternity roost. You know, human babies are kept warm. They're wrapped in little blankets. Here, they're just, give, they give, these animals give birth in a very warm, warm cave. And so uh, in addition to the warmth in there, uh, on the floor of the cave is where the bats uh, uh, leave their droppings, uh, which, which is called guano. And this guano uh, is a source of food for other animals. Uh, for example, insects feed on the guano. And so if you were to go into the cave, you would also find uh, the floor just teeming with insects, which we call dermestid beetles. And they actually, they feed on dead organic matter. They feed on, if an animal dies, sometimes bats fall to the floor of the cave. And once they're there, they are trapped. They can't fly off the ground. and uh, these little predaceous beetles start feeding on them. <laughs>